Hi. This week, um, I've finally completed all the painting and building of the vehicles. And uh, I've got everything now to the stage where it needs basing up, which is what I'm going to be looking at next. But I just thought I'd start, you know, by letting you have a, a look at them now that they're all painted. So you can see that it's finally all come together. That's what I'm calling the uh, first platoon, but th it, that's just my way to refer to them at the moment. There's nothing set in stone about what they're going to be, so. But they're all painted, the vehicles are all weathered. Same with this second one. I mean, we'll take a proper look at them as we uh, base them up. Um, as I said before, I think uh, I'm not going to make a very clear distinction, but I will probably um, put more rubble on one set than the other, and the other ones with a suggestion of grass or whatever, just just so it breaks it up and I've got you know different base troops really but not so different that they don't all come together as an army so that's what i'm going to be looking at next so i'll just get set up and uh we'll have a look at the first batch so i've been thinking uh, about how i'm going to base these now uh, specifically and if you recall, I initially I I bought some uh, a building mix. This one. Now, I I've tried that loosely on one of the bases, and to be honest, I was a bit underwhelmed. To be honest, it it's good, but I don't know whether I want all of it based on base with this really. Um. I think this would probably be more useful on buildings and terrain, to be honest. So I've put that to one side. Now, some time ago, I think I mentioned it in another video, I dropped some flower pots in the garden. And as part of the tidying up, um, you know, I was sweeping it all up and I noticed all the little flecks of terracotta and the dust and everything. So I thought, well, I'd perhaps be able to use that. Well, I've still got a supply of that. And what I've done is I've mixed it with some of the little tiny terracotta bricks that you can buy. And uh, what I've done then is I've got this little coffee blender that I bought. And I tipped it all into that and gave it several buzzes. And... Uh, it came out looking like this. Now that seems a lot more, you know, like building debris to me than, than the other one. I think the other one's more, say, like a, a large block that's come down, whereas this is more building debris. So I'm happier with that, but again, you know, even just, just trying a little bit on the base, I wasn't, I didn't really want it to be totally that. So what I'm thinking of doing with the uh, first section, it's going to be a bit time consuming, but I've I really enjoyed doing these and I want to do it, do it right and, you know, make sure I'm happy with it. So what I might do on this first platoon is I might use some green stuff and uh, roll, roll it out and then put an imprint of cobblestones on it. Now, I know that's going to be quite laborious because obviously the figures are already on there. But as I say, I mean, it's not the way I would normally have done it. But I want these, I want to be happy with the finish. You know, we all do, don't we? When we've, when we've put all that work into painting it, you want it to be right. So I'm going to have a look with that uh, platoon and applying some green stuff and some cobble effects, but then also using this across the cobblestones. 
So I don't necessarily need to put green stuff all around or anything like that. I could just do a suggestion in different places on the bases. And then use this one that I've made um, to, to get that one done. Now, I said to you the other, the other batch, Platoon 2, um, I'm not looking at making that so much, uh, you know, like building debris. But nevertheless, I don't want it, you know, lawn green grass. Because I don't think that's going to look right either. Now, I haven't made this one up myself. This is one from um, Geek Gaming. And it's called Base Ready Patchy Planes. And I thought, you know, this one, it's got that hint of green, but it's also got bits of rubble and debris in it. I don't know whether you can see it very clearly. I'll try and bring it right up. But I mean, these base ready that uh, Geek Gaming do are really good. I have used several of them, so I don't always make up my own. And I think this one will work well for the second platoon. So I think, to be honest, that's the way I'm going to go. Now, obviously, that's going to cause a bit of a delay because with working with the green stuff on this first platoon, that's going to need some, you know, curing time. So... It, it's going to hold that one back. So I'm going to have to come back to that later in the video. Um, but in the meantime, I can press ahead um, with the second platoon instead and get that on onto them. So if you bear with me, I'll straighten up my desk and everything and uh, then we'll crack on with them. So looking at the second platoon... As I say, I'm going to go with uh, the fit, this uh, Geek Gaming Base Ready Patchy Planes. So the process on this one's going to be, you know, a lot simpler, really. What I am going to do is, on the odd one, I'm going to include a tuft. Um, I've got a couple of varieties here that I'm, I've looked at and think that I might use. Um, sometimes I'll put them on with just ordinary glue sometimes I'll put them on beforehand but what I'm going to do is I'm going to base these up and uh, I'll just take you through the first few that I do so he's going to be the first one so what I'm going to do is put out some of my fast drying basing glue put that all around the figure I'm trying not to get it on the boot I know you can uh, brush it off but the least you do the better again obviously without doing it for the camera you can get through these pretty quick to be fair right that's the first one and then all I do is put him into it, give it a bit of a shake round while he's in there. Tap off any obvious loose things. And that's the first one. I'll just put a light on him so you can see him a bit better. And I just what I'll do is I'll just go around this edge as well and make sure that there's nothing stuck to the outer rim. And that's him done. And the next one.
show you. Do the Piat Man. It's a very simple and quick process. And like I said, I mean, the main thing I wanted to get away from was having it, you know, like he's running across a, a lawn. I wanted it to look more, you know, battle ready. That's them two. Right. I'll crack on with these and then I'll bring you back when I've done a lot more of them and show you how I'm getting on. So that's completed uh, platoon number two. And uh, basically what I've done with this one is again, rather than having it totally uniform and having everyone look the same, everyone's on green, everyone's on brick. I've tried to mix it up a bit, so some have got hardly any brick on at all, some have got none on at all, um, and you know, same with the grass, sometimes it's uh, more brick than grass. So I've tried to mix it up, and that way when I cut back to the other ones that I've put a bit of a uh, cobble street pattern on, they'll kind of blend, even though they're not all the same. So I'll just bring one or two up for you to see. I'll pick the machine gun one first. Machine gun there. Vickers. So that one's out in the open. It's set up near some tree stubs. And branches that have fell. And I, I thought I'd have that one like that because the other one I have definitely, you know, in the other platoon, um, I've put that one very much in the cityscape. So I thought I'd have this so I've got a bit of variety. The howitzer have left pretty much as it is, although I've just put one or two tufts on it. Because I wanted to just keep that fairly simple. And then it will just let the scenery around it speak for it really. But if I pick out this chap. You'll see that although he's got the green and scrub of the field. There's also the hint of brick like he's just running into an area where. The bricks have collapsed down. So he could fit equally well in both, I think. You know, that, that's the feel that I wanted to get from these. So they'll kind of be at home wherever they are. They won't look totally out of place if they're stood in the middle of a field. And vice versa, they won't look totally out of place in a, in a town. As I say, they all... They all vary. This one's got none at all and it's got a tuft. Same with the my potential higher ranks Percot has got quite a bit of a brick background or big brick base on his but there is a hint of the grass and everything so you know he could be 
down the street, he could have stepped off a garden, he could have cut across a field between houses. And that's the kind of look that I'm looking for, really. I wanted it to be, you know, to break it up. Like this one, he's got quite a bit more brick that he's run into. So that's it for the second platoon. They're pretty much going to... Oh, there is one other that I could perhaps show you, and that is the flamethrower chaps. They've obviously run onto a bit of street, but it has got that hint that they've come off the scrubland area and a bit of the brick as well. So it kind of brings all of them together. He's even stepped into a bit of a slushy hole in the ground on that one. You know, to just show that everything's damaged and, uh, you know, it's a battle area. So, so that's that one. And then obviously the vehicles, because they're not based, they're going to be just as, as they are really. So, you know, I, I did have that... Uh, you know thought about whether i should base them or not but i've opted not to for now i've always got the option i suppose of looking at it again if i want to but at the moment i'm going to leave them unbased so that's it um what i'll do is we'll have a look at the other ones as i move through the stages because obviously i've had to wait for the green stuff um to actually uh, set first and then I'm going to have to uh, primer and paint it up before I even get to any other stage but uh, yeah I'll bring you back shortly alright so this is what I'm going to be doing as I said with the uh, first platoon I've mixed up some uh, green stuff and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small amount off because it, it needs to be small because I, I don't want it to fill the entire thing I think probably just roll that round a minute probably about the size of a small pea and then what I'm going to do is put that on the base Now I have got some uh, green stuff, rubber tip brush, I call them brushes, but they're sculpting things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this around till I can get it fairly low so it don't overstand the lip. little dab of water helps when you're using green stuff So I know this is very time consuming and fiddly so but that's that's what it looks like when I've smeared a bit on it I mean obviously when I'm not doing it for the camera I'll be doing this significantly faster but uh, nevertheless there it is so when I've got the little bit of green stuff uh, smeared on all I do is simply put in with a sharp I mean, I'm just using the edge of my knife the suggestion of the cobblestones 
because remember we're going to put rubble over this anyway I mean it would be better in a way if I'd got a lot of uh, if I'd have made up all the bases in advance and then affixed them to something like this but obviously I hadn't thought I was going to go this way initially so you know you've got to adapt haven't you to what you've done there we go look Can see what I'm doing just putting a suggestion of it in because remember I'm going to put the, the rubble over it as well so it, it's not going to be an issue for it to not be complete right so I've done a, a, a few more and uh, I'm finding the easiest way is to keep it really small Put it where you want it and then smooth it out into the place where you want it. There we go. It doesn't have to be much because I'm going to be basing them in the conventional way. I mean, obviously, like I say, if I'd known I was going to go for this kind of finish, what I would have done is I would have just uh, prepared the bases before I actually stuck them in place. But to be honest, I've just changed my mind with this one. And, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't recommend this as the best way to do it because it certainly isn't. But... Um, I just want them to be finished the way I want them so I'm I'm prepared to go to this extra bit of trouble and uh, faff to make it happen but as I say you know if you were looking to have like a cobblestone effect it may work well be worth preparing your bases in advance and uh, that way you don't have any of this issue at all and it's straightforward you just Put the figure onto it and then prime it in in the same way you would with everything else but uh i, I just want to do it with these troops so i'm prepared to do it and uh i know the other ones are going to be a breeze so i don't mind spending a little bit of extra time you know getting these how i want them to be so but I'll crack on through some of these. I might not do every single one. And uh, then I'll bring you back when they're done. So I've uh, applied uh, all the green stuff to these uh, in Platoon 1. As you can, I'll bring up some individual ones so you can see. I've not necessarily... Uh, filled the same area on the uh, base each time sometimes I've filled it more than others um, like that one I've got a lot more on that one but it varies you know I, I just basically I wanted to show an element of that under whatever I actually put on it you know like the brick dust that I made so that's what I'm aiming for with these. So I've turned my attention back to this uh, squad now. And basically what I'm doing is I'm using dark stone for all the edges. I've also undercoated and then dark stoned over all the suggestions of road that I'd put on these with the green stuff. And now I'm just giving it a, a light brush of ash grey and then obviously I will be putting on some more uh, rubble and stuff like that but first of all I want to get them all to this same stage I've also um, used the dark stone to edge the previous ones as well that have got the more scrubland cover So, I'll just do one or two. So, 
dip it in the ash, rub most of it off. Then what I do is, if I've caught the edge again, I just go over it with the dark stone. Just so all the edges and the rims of the bases look the same. And that looks like that at this stage. So I've just got the rest of these to do and uh, when they're dry then I'll be ready to add some more of the brick dust and uh, other rubbles. So I'll bring you back when I've got through these and I'll show you what I'm doing next. Right well I'm definitely getting there now. I'm adding the uh, brick dust and uh, some of the uh, scrubland grass material as well to the planar edges where I've not put the the road imprint but um, I'm just trying to keep it quite mixed up you know so there's a lot of variety I'll put some grass on this one So that's what he's looking like and I'm doing that to each and every one I'll show you this one this one's not got any of the grass on but what I will be doing is obviously I've got to fix these yet with the watered down PVA um, but I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to give uh, a bit of a strong wash to some of the brick areas just to pick out the details a bit more uh, I think it'll just add a little something to it I'm going to try it on one and then see what it looks like and then take it from there but uh, I've just got one more squad and then the uh, six pounder which I will be dressing up with a bit of the shrubland as well as some tufts and uh, That'll be both armies complete then. It's just a matter of sealing them all with the glue. So I'll bring you back when I've got to that stage and uh, I'll crack on with these for now. So what I'm doing now is I'm using some watered down PVA and sealing the first platoon. Now that it's had thorough time to dry. I try and just keep the level just below the rim. It will dry clear so. It's got a little bit of uh, flow improver in it as well as you can probably see because it's draining straight away. Um, because if you don't, it can just sit on the surface. And, uh, and you can end up with a bit of a mess, really. Not only that, it won't fix it down. It'll just fix what's going to fall off. As you can see, you can go through these fairly quickly doing this. Definitely one of them jobs where less is more. <laughs> it's very easy to overdo it and then it can look pretty awful. But if you just take your time, put a little bit on and uh, 
if it's not enough, you can always give it a second sweep with it. But it's it's just best to do it a bit at a time. The rim's your good guide for this because obviously if you're coming up to your rim, it's enough. Because it will dry out and the, the moisture will just evaporate away as well. So you know you're not going to overdo it by doing that. I also put a little bit through the tufts as well um, because then it's got more points of contact than just being stuck to the base from underneath. But as you can see, it's it's a fairly quick process. So, and to be honest, I mean, I have faffed around a little bit with uh, certainly the second platoon. Um, but to be honest, I think it's one of one of the bits of preparing the figures that I enjoy the most is the basing. I mean, people, you know, say that. You know, if you do a reasonable base, it can bring up, you know, what might not be the best of paint jobs that you've done. And I think that's true, because they certainly come alive once they've got their bases on. Anyway, I won't keep you watching all of this, because I'm sure it's pretty boring. So I'll carry on with these, get these done, and then I'll come back. I'm just in the process of uh, adding the transfers to these and uh, essentially with it being the, the smock all there is on most of them is just the wing badge and uh, to be honest it doesn't really show up that well. <clears throat> it's better um, on my sergeants where you get to put the stripes on. But I don't know whether you can see that. That's the one in place. Now obviously I've gone through um, the entire box behind me putting these on. But like I say they don't really stand out. And to be honest... Having done all of these already, my eyes are out on stalks. But uh, I've started now, so I'm going I'm to carry on and do it. But I don't know whether you, I hope you can see it. I can only see it by wearing mag, uh, magnifying glasses, and even then I'm straining. But I guess that's just my eyes, so... But hey-ho, I'm going to press on with it now, and then... I'll have to start the other platoon as well. Um, hopefully I'll have enough uh, emblems for them all. I think I have. But uh, I'll bring you back when they're done. Right, so that's got the complete army done now. They're all painted and based. Um, I've painted all the rims. And uh, I've given them a coat of varnish. I think the uh on the whole I'm I'm pretty happy with these. I've and I've really enjoyed making them. And it's it's nice to be at this process where they're, they're all done and together. One element that I'm not quite so happy with is the uh Citadel contrast paint. Uh I think it's Zinman Flesh or something like that. I think it's just left some of them a little bit too pale for my liking. Um, so on the on the whole, um, I think I'd probably have gone with my more conventional um, face painting. That said, I mean, some of them look pretty good. It's just uh, on some, it's left them really pale. I've noticed 
it's mainly on the metal figures that it's it, it seems to have lost that colour. But then again, these photos are probably um, actually exaggerating how pale some of them are. But uh, no, but on the whole, I'm 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 really chuffed, and I'm glad that I've got to this stage um, because obviously from here on now, it's going to be about um, getting the train ready for the project and uh, some of the buildings that I've got, and also the uh, glider as well that. Uh, I'll be turning to in the near future. But, uh, yeah. On the whole, I'm pretty pleased with how they've turned out. I, I mean, it's it's like everything. When, you, when you've when uh, you painted them, you, you can always think of bits that you'd improve. And that, that's, the you know, that's one of the joys of the hobby, really. It's a learning process. You know, each time you get that little bit better with it and a bit more confident. And you try something else. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this journey. And uh, I hope you found something in some of these vlogs at least a little bit useful. And, uh, you know, if nothing else, you can learn from mistakes I've made. So, but uh, yeah, thanks again for joining me. And uh, if you have enjoyed it, do consider giving me a like. Or even subscribe and click the bell so you get a notification when the next video drops. Anyway, thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Bye.